So hello everyone. Um, today I'm in conversation with Marina Orsini Jones about her virtual exchange uh, project. So um, Marina, first of all, would you like to introduce yourself, where you work and what your role is um, at your institution? Um, right, I'm at Coventry University and um, I've been here for around 37 years on and off, so a long time. I started as Italian language assistant then became associate head of humanities. And recently I've joined the research center for global learning where I have um, a specific remit related to virtual exchange, collaborative online international learning. Yes, Marina, that's what we, we're going to talk about today because I know you've been involved and we've also been working together on and off for the past few years on various um, COIL virtual exchange collaborative learning projects. Now, I'm looking at your female voices in the third space project. Tell us um, about a bit of background to this project and also what do you mean by third space? Yes, I think uh, it really links to my past as a, an administrator of internationalization at home, as a Societe Edo School for the School of Humanities, and my present as a researcher researching equality, diversity, and inclusion, uh, and how virtual exchange called can collaborative like international, international learning can support equality, diversity, and inclusion. And so it came to be in that the idea of the third space came from the experience of doing COIL. And I noticed that uh, particularly female participants appear to be quite empowered in that space. And the third space is a concept coined by Baba, who is a sociologist, anthropologist, not a linguist, but it is a space which is liminal and it's a space which is challenging where things happen um, which were not expected before. Uh -huh. So it, is, it can be transformational. And um, why is it challenging? Because um, we feel in the team, and the team is formed by myself as a co-lead applicant with Lynette Jacobs, who uh, again is not a linguist. She has a uh, past in many, many subjects, but she also stronger. Uh, at the moment, she's leading educational research at the University of the Free State in South Africa. Right. And um, um, Dr. Firia, Kiria Finardi, who, like me, has a past for internationalization at home linked with research, and she has even opened new roads um, into decolonizing the curriculum. She recently presented Francesca Helm, very interesting presentation at Uni Collaboration in Leon on this. So mm -hmm. we're trying to mix a few concepts, but starting as a third space, why third space? because we feel um, it opens up new ways of knowing, of relating, um, or, and of expressing yourself, uh, while at the same time of being. And we are dealing mainly in the female voices, from my point of view, with students in teacher education, right. some in service, some pre-service, um, some new to uh, being taught how to teach, some uh, quite uh, well versed in it. And what we find is that uh, most of them have never experienced this third space. Okay. And what happens is that we find they really, well, a majority of them will tend to be from what are defined as ODI countries. So countries in the global south, because right. my students, I'm in the UK, I teach on a master's in English language teaching applied linguistics, but my students are mainly from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, China, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, uh, and many other countries, sometimes right. up to 15. So they uh, come into this space uh, with a bit of apprehension because it takes them out of their comfort zone. But at the same time, then they discover they can express themselves. And there are ways in which they feel it's, an, it's a different learning space and they can do some interesting things in it. Right, so just going back a bit. So your project um, started last September, Marina. Can you outline your, your main aims for this project? Because you spoke about decolonization and that's very much 
um, a buzzword at the moment about decolonizing the curriculum. So I'm just picking up on what you said before. Would you like to, to outline your, your main aims and how it's going so far? Well, in a way, we're questioning our assumptions on uh, virtual exchange and COIL. And we designed a kind of theorization based on Betty Risk's um, theorization of internationalization of the curriculum, which linked together conceptualization of local context, global context, and how international internationalizing through virtual exchange COIL can support all this in a holistic way. Right. And we argued that really, um, particularly women, can develop values and capitals, which sometimes they don't have the opportunity to develop in other learning spaces. Mm -hmm. And these have to do with, uh, yes, um, equity, equality, um, mutuality, inclusivity, in terms of values and diversity, and in terms of uh, capitals, trust, cultural, digital, psychological, and structural. And I'm I'm a bit tense about the digital because I've just seen a presentation by Kramsch, which she gave yesterday at a conference in Switzerland, where she said that digital capital and digital skills and competence might be a Western construct as well. So I'm now becoming uh, questioning that as well. But what we 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 are what we're questioning is, does Coil really do that uh -huh. um, in terms of intersectionality? with a focus on female participants. Can we really claim it is an equality oriented, diversity oriented space, or are we perhaps putting too many um, assumptions on, on COIL in terms of EDI, equality, diversity and inclusion? And we also link with the critical virtual exchange, which is what Miriam Hauk and Francesca Helm have worked on for a long time. Yes, well. I wanted to pick up on that because yes. um, I, I sort of saw notions of critical virtual exchange in your in your project. So you've been going since last September. How long is the project going to go for and how many participants, how many female participants do you have? OK, so the project will last until uh, August 2025. Right. And uh, we are bringing together um, participants who are participating in projects which are um, some of them related to applied linguistics, others related to other subjects, because a lot of the participants brought in by the South African partner participated in a big project, Erasmus Plus project called Ikudu. And you can find details on this online. And even Ikudu was covering diversity on a grand scale with um, hundreds of participants involved. Right. And at the moment, we are aiming for 80 participants uh, between academic staff and academic students, as well, university students who have been involved in collaborative online international learning virtual exchange. And at the moment, we have, to date, we've already interviewed uh, around 30 students, and we have recruited the initial seven staff because we, we're starting with the students, and we're just finishing the first phase of recruitment for the students and analyzing the data and we're starting with the interviews with staff in June then we'll do a second round at the end of the year and do the analysis afterwards we recruited mainly um it was kind of self-selection and contacts and I, I hope to to post into uni collaboration with further recruitment for the second round yes I wanted to ask you are you still looking for other recruits and if so, how can people become involved in your project if they are interested? If you look in at the website, um, for staff at the moment, there is a call and it says, would you like to take, to take part? And there is um, a privacy approved, uh, ethically approved uh, survey where right. staff and students can join. At the moment, we have the staff survey up, but we will attach the student one because we just finished the first round with students. And uh, we welcome anybody at the moment with staff we have recruited mainly from Brazil, uh, UK, Brazil and UK. So we like to have more with students. To date, we've had students from uh, many countries, I think 15 roughly. And so from four continents. So we've had uh, Latin America, South Africa, Europe and Asia. Oh. And um, yes, it's quite a big variety of students. And we're getting very mixed responses, but on the whole, it seems that what we thought, what our little hypothesis was, that it does provide a third space where women, female students can thrive, 
seems to be there. And another thing which is emerging is the sense of belonging to a community of practice uh, of uh, teachers to be or teachers who are and are developing together, sharing intercultural knowledge on local practices, which can be very different. So, for example, we've had the understanding of different policies between Turkey, which is interestingly enough classified officially as an ODI country, but in the, the view of our participants, they were quite surprised to hear that. So it's okay. also what is a global South? So we're now discussing that as well. Okay. And what is also emerging very strongly from at least the students who are in teacher education to teach English, how empowering it was to realize that there are so many of their peers across the world who are very anxious about their proficiency in English. Mm. We thought that they will become English teachers. Yes, yes. And the fact that participating in these, um, so the, for example, we are, we've interviewed quite a, a number of students who took part in a, in a virtual exchange based on decolonizing the English language curriculum, the English language teaching curriculum last semester. And we have 61 participants, mainly from uh, Brazil, Spain, Turkey, South Africa, sorry, pardon, China. And uh, what came through was they felt very intimidated to begin with because of the lead person being me in the UK. Then they wow. realized that not only I'm not L1 myself in English, but all the other participants were also not L1. And they really enjoyed realizing how many varieties of English that were being spoken. Absolutely. There are more non-native speakers of English than native speakers. So I think it's yes. safe to say there are many, many different varieties of English. There's not just one English. I think that's true to say. And when people realize that, you can really say, oh, I can relax yes. and I can commu and use English as a tool to communicate yes. rather than feeling intimidated that they've got to get all their grammar right and it's all got to be perfect. So... And we had one participant who has allowed me to quote her um, from India, who is actually, I'm very proud of her because she's actually managed to get a scholarship for PhD studies on EDI here as well. But she said uh, she always felt her variety of English, the Indian variety was inferior until she took part in this virtual exchange on decolonizing the curriculum in applied linguistics. Fantastic. And until she realized... Uh, feelings were shared with a lot of other peers. And it seems as well, from what we're seeing, um, female participants seems to be more overt in this discussion. And uh, it's also much, for example, a participant from Northern Cyprus, she said, she feels it's a safe third space, the virtual exchange, yes. because she said in a face-to-face -face classroom in her country, men tend to take uh, the yes. lead. Yes. So that's and women can be silenced. Yes. While in the virtual exchange, the coil, the way particularly we organized it because we had the breakout rooms with um, immediators and the immediators were often students who had participated in the prior cycle yeah. because we had uh, two starts on our masters, uh, the September and the January, and we tend to recruit students who took part in September to, to do it in January as right. mediators. And they felt that the role of the mediator in scaffolding knowledge and the mediators are never the leads. They're never the main tutors. The main tutors stay out of the breakout rooms. So it is a kind of really open third space where they, safe feel space. Yeah. they a safe space safe where they can express themselves. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're pleased to see that in terms of what we were aiming for, which was testing our um, theoretical framework, of EDI, um, you know, does does this framework really resonate with female staff and students? Staff, we can't say yet, we've not interviewed them yet, but it really seems to resonate with students. Having said that, there is a limitation, which is the enthusiastic students who really like the experience volunteered to be part. Um, and I'm aware of the fact that uh, is not so inclusive in all respects, because it really takes students out of the comfort zone and sometimes staff out of the comfort zone. So I don't think the students who, the female students who were challenged by the experience or whose digital tools were not as good as they could have been, um, 
who felt they would never be able to implement something so revolutionary because some they really perceive it to be yes. something which is you no know, they've not encountered before. Yes, absolutely. They might not have come forward. So I think that is a limitation of the study because so far we've had the enthusiasts volunteering. Okay. Um, and there are some mentions in the interviews we're carrying out of the awareness of the fact that not all students bought into the experience. Right. Not all female students did. Mm. It's a learning and, curve all the time and things yeah. evolve. So yeah. Marina, maybe um, after when your project gets more underway and you have more insights, maybe we can revisit and talk again further down the line and you can tell us more about what's happened during your project and things that you've found. Would you yes. come back? Yes, and in fact, on the 18th of March, which you mentioned, we're going to have the first dissemination event for the project, which will be in hybrid. And anybody interested could look at the third space, um, Female Voices Third Space, it comes up on our website, and they can join online if they want to. We are at capacity, face-to-face, -face, going to be a hybrid event. But we're going to also hold focus groups with uh, staff and students who have participated. Uh, we're hoping to get the staff to fill in the ethics so we can hold the focus groups so we, we are likely to have initial results after the event on the 18th okay. which is a joint event with this other ikudu very large project which also includes uh, jos belen from uh, the hague and his team and uh, we are mixing together internationalization at home models with third spaces where you can grow new capitals and new well, EDI-oriented uh, values as well. Thank you, Marina. Yeah. Thank you.